What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today is actually my first video I'm making in three weeks I'd say. Um, if you haven't you know, been keeping up with my channel, I've been away in the UK and also Austria for the last two or three weeks and now is my first video back um, straight into things with my league race here at the Japanese Grand Prix. So. Um, I'm gonna be a bit rusty. Um, oh, here we go. Here come all the excuses. Um, I also, uh, while I was away, I got a play seat sent to me by um, Veloce Esports and also uh, play seat themselves. So um, huge thank you to them. Um, I got off the plane, I think like Saturday. Um, spent most of Saturday building it, and then Sunday I was trying to like put my wheel and pedals in and everything, and just trying to just do all that in amongst, you know, unpacking and, and everything. It was a race against time to get this thing set up um, for this league race. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, it was just a bit unpractical for me to use this play seat right now. It's actually sitting, like, literally on my floor in my room, and um, I did one lap, one lap in practice uh, with the play seat, and I was like, no, this is already uncomfortable. How am I going to survive a one-hour league race plus practice? I decided to move my play seat to the side and bring out my old setup and it was literally a race against time to get this thing set up for the start of this league race and um, yeah, as you can tell I'm, I'm yeah struggling to get to terms with this game again because like I said it's been three weeks since I've played it uh, it's bad enough when you go a few days without playing playing the game let alone nearly a month so as you can tell, I'm very rusty, and because I was, you know, fumbling around with my setup trying to get it all together, there was no preparation. Like, literally, this qualifying session here is my practice and getting warm-up for this game once again. So, yeah, that first uh, run of qualifying was pretty much a throwaway. I did a 1 minute 40, um, letting Warden go through, um, so that was very representative. But, um, as we head out for the uh, second half of the session, it's actually going to be raining for the race, and sometimes... Um, it can be raining, but you're still on dry tyres. So the reason why I'm on mediums here is in case that does in fact happen. Um, so we can have a massive uh, strategy advantage uh, for the race and uh, be on a compound that is going to be much faster than those on the softer ones. So um, I knew coming into this my pace wasn't going to be great. I knew I wasn't going to qualify well anyway, so I thought I'd take the, the gamble on this set of medium tyres and just uh, see how we go, really. I feel like there's a million other points that I should mention are worth mentioning in this um, but I've probably forgotten them there's a, a lot of circumstantial stuff um, heading into this oh yeah my my gamer tag is um, Tia Ryan LZN I don't know how that's happened some kind of glitch um, New Zealand Ryan is only NZL in uh, in this lobby um, and I had to check my gamer tag as well to make sure that something wasn't going on I'm still TM at Marduk but for some reason me and Ryan have switched gamer tag somehow so that's a uh, that's a first. We ended up in 13th place, 2.4 seconds off the pace. I, like I said, I was not expecting any uh, miracles from this session. It was really just a warm-up and seeing if I could get some kind of tire advantage for the race, which there was not, because it's intermediate tires, but that's fine, because I... Yeah, it, it was a gamble, and uh, one that didn't really pay off. So here we are for the Japanese Grand Prix. Uh, we're 13th place, like I said, so we're towards the back. We're going to play ourselves into this race very, very calmly, um, because like I said, the pace is not going to be there. So let's just survive this first lap and see where we end up. Away we go to the Japanese Grand Prix. That music is very, very loud. I'm going to have to turn that down right now in editing. But here we go. Um, through turn one. Uh, let's see if we can get around the outside of Brock Does stuff. No, we're actually in the gravel and we're completely off the track. That is our race potentially over before it even begins here in this Japanese Grand Prix. Um, You'll notice, uh, I'll show a replay now, I was actually heading into turn one and I had no brake pedal. So uh, that's one point I forgot to mention is with my play seat, to make it work, I had to switch my um, brake to my clutch. But when I went into qualifying for this session, um, my brake pedal was my brake pedal. And then the game has just done a Houdini act on me and switched it back to my clutch pedal for the race. So that really screwed me over there. But thankfully, we have our front wing. We have no track position. We are last out of anyone. Five seconds off the next car. And we lose the back end massively through 130R. Almost ending our race right then and there. But man, what a... <laughs> At this point, I was like, I have no expectations for this race. Let's just play ourselves into it nicely. See where we end up. Prey on mistakes of other people. And um, 
just march our way forward. Uh, our pace at this point of the Grand Prix is going to be really slow anyway, but if we can just continue to find momentum, find positions, we'll naturally get faster as the race goes on. So I'm hoping to get somewhere near the top five. That'd be a good result for us here today, but we need to get through the traffic well. Need to make sure we look after the tyres. Uh, it's going to be a one stop in this one. Um, the game recommends a two stop, but we can stretch it to do one. So let's see what we can do. I'll be inside of Chimchar here. Gets a bad exit out of uh, the spoon curve. That is us up in a P15. You can see the leaders are about, I don't know, 15 seconds ahead. So we're already pretty much a pit stop down on our teammate and our championship rivals. But as many positions as we can get early on is going to be vital for our championship standings. Because we actually are still second in the driver's standings despite being away for three weeks. Yes, I, I honestly can't believe it either. Warden has had a pretty unlucky run himself this season. And uh, yeah, let's uh, try and close the gap if we can. Next up is Poms to the Win 87. He runs wide through uh, 130R here. So a lot of drivers here making mistakes in these conditions. I'm uh, literally driving at about 70% here. Um, just driving well within the limits. Just trying to make sure I don't make mistakes. And actually learn the game again. Because... When you're away for so long, it feels like you have to pretty much learn how to drive again. And that was, you know, certainly the case for me today. P6, uh, lap 6, sorry, or in P12. HO is up next. He's uh, coming up to the back of Proctor's stuff. And both of these guys, uh, you know, can be known for their lag a little bit. So um, when it came to this battle, I was... Oh, no, HO's gone. He's... I can't believe that. He's to he's, he's touched the curb on the exit of uh, the first sector and, and that team out. I was just going to say, these guys are pretty well known for their lag, so I was hanging it pretty careful just in case they would uh, desync and lag back into me. But now it's game on. Brock does stuff up next. He's had a really terrible run through the spoon curve on the entry and on the exit as well. So let's see if we can make the most of this in the slipstream. I'm not too sure if slipstream glitch is in effect right now. I don't think it is. It's fine. We're going to go the inside into 130. I had to shift down to 6 gear just to make sure we didn't get through there um, without crashing because in the rain 130R is actually a corner and sometimes like you saw on the first lap we can lose it even when we're going through there just by ourselves but Brock got a terrible run through the final corner. I had to pretty much lift off there to make sure I didn't run into the back of him. Just like I did to, I think, Dominator this time last season, which ruined my championship. But we're going to go up the inside here into the hairpin. Brock is really defending this very hard um, on lap 9. Lap 9 of this Japanese Grand Prix. He's leaked a lot of time to the cars in front. He's just holding himself up and myself as well. Just trying to maintain P10. I'm not too sure why he's doing this because... He's going to lose the position anyway, but now he's just, I don't know, he's harming both of our races here. Look at that squeeze into the grass there. This is really starting to piss me off. I've got grass on the tyres, heading through 130 yard. Uh, dirty air, we've been escorted wide and, yeah, that's not that's not the greatest run through there. Again, grass on the tyres. I've got pretty much no control over the car and we've been given a 10 second time penalty. But not even gaining an advantage. Locking up on a straight going off the track and rejoining straight away and that is the penalty we get uh, all because it started by Brock squeezing us off the track about 500 meters down the road so here you go we got a warning for exceeding track limits that one was fine and then here we yeah we just went off the track because we were locking up rejoined pretty much at the same point 10 second time penalty race ruined potentially and uh, yeah that's that's not what you want fighting over P10. We saw Greek Master spin out just a few corners ago. Um, he's now retired from the Grand Prix uh, in the Saab, but this is now his teammate V-Fens, uh, pretty much at the exact same time, making a pit stop. Now, it's worth noting that Greek Master retired when he was making a pit stop in this Grand Prix, and now his teammate V-Fens follows him in for a pit stop, but he can't serve it because his retired car is taking up that spot in the lane. Steering wheel, collapse the steering wheel here. Give me the steering wheel. Hey! Hey! Steering wheel, somebody tell him to give it to me. Come on! Whoa! Unbelievable. I have no words. That is one of the most unfair things I have ever seen in league racing. V Fence challenging for the lead of this Grand Prix with my teammate Ryan through no fault of his own cannot serve a pit stop and is trapped in the lane for a hundred seconds uh, and then here you can see his race just 
Well, it's over now. He was going for fastest lap, and uh, that's the end of his day. Going from challenging from the lead uh, in second place to out of the Grand Prix. Unbelievable. Uh, meanwhile, for me, we, we finally get some justice now. We get past Brock, who makes another mistake. The, the dude was making mistakes left, right, and center, and holding holding me up no end. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't know sometimes when people who are much slower just get in a fight that they're not supposed to be in. It, it harms their race almost more than it harms mine, because I'm going to get through the field anyway, and you just kind of slowing yourself up. I, I really don't get it. We make a pit stop now on lap 15 um, and we're going to take these tyres to the end of the race. So it looks like the one stop is going to be viable today but yeah, just going back to that I, I, I don't understand like why people battle like it's for the world championship when they're going to get overtaken anyway. Here's Drop Bear uh, dropping it at the exit of turn 1. We're going to see if we can make an advantage around this. Around the outside through uh, the S-curve and I think there was a bit of contact between the two of us there. Drop Bear is on the um, gravel trap there, and I, I, I got to put my hand up there, that was my fault. He was on the inside, I think I m just misjudged how quickly I was overtaking him there, I thought I was clear of him, turned in too much, and I think I chopped off his, his uh, front tyres there, so I think I'm probably going to get a penalty for that, which, uh, you know, I probably have no, I have no problem with that, that was my fault, but uh, we cut on to lap 21, we're doing the same move now on Neon Tree Dome, who did the exact same mistake as what Drop Bear did. So a lot of people in this Grand Prix just overstepping the mark in turn one, just getting a bit greedy with how much uh, grip they think they have and um, just paying the price for it. It was really surprising just to see how almost most of my overtakes were forced by mistakes of other people in front, um, which definitely made life much easier for me. We've now got Rain 96 or Jetson F1 who uh, recently changed his gamer tag to. Uh, we're going to see if we can uh, get him up the inside here into the final chicane. Really late lunge, locking up the brakes, and we just managed to pull it up there. Rain was uh, uh, pretty much equal to me there, holding it around the outside, but it turned to the inside for the next left-hander, and now we get the better traction on the exit of the final corner. It's all about minimizing the wheel spin through that final corner, and we did that just a little bit better than what Rain did, and we move up inside the top five after being last place at the start of this Grand Prix by at least five seconds with no practice, not driving the aim for three weeks. We have made some kind of a comeback. And uh, now for almost the first time in this Grand Prix, we have clear air, so now we can see what we are capable of doing. Going purple to the first sector split, so that was uh, pretty encouraging for me. But unfortunately, we're not going to move up any more places. Uh, Dominator is 21 seconds up the road. That is how much time we lost getting through the traffic. Um, losing that time at turn one, um, getting escorted off the track by Brock, getting yeah that 10 second time penalty, all of that, all that squabbling, uh, is, yeah we've dropped so much time, but um, one thing we're not dropping time in is uh, fast slap, that was uh, pretty good from us, 142.2, I think that was pretty much matching uh, what the lead guys were doing, and we did that pretty much at the end of our um, stint there, so I was pretty impressed with that. Again, pushing on the last lap there, probably pushing a little bit too far. Ran a bit wide through 130R, and uh, after that I just had, pretty much had to kill it off, because that was the end of the Grand Prix. Checkered flag, P5. It uh, may still be P5 in this Grand Prix if I can get that 10 second time penalty removed, but I also may get demoted again uh, with the incident with Drop Bear. We'll just have to wait and see. I'll update you guys um, in the next week of league racing. So, Ryan wins the Grand Prix. Full congrats to him. DRC Jared coming home in P2. Um, keeping his nose clean. And I think that is Warden um, getting the final spot on the podium there. So, full congrats to those guys. Uh, there was no way I was going to challenge them. Uh, not with the preparation that I had. Um, but considering that I only finished um, one or two places off of... You know, my championship rivals, I will certainly take that given the circumstances. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more F1 gaming stuff. Only a few more weeks now until F1 2018. Um, I think we've got two weeks left of AOR, one week left of SRL. So all these leagues are wrapping up. I need to get going with my uh, career mode series on F1 2006. Because like I said, it's crunch time. F1 2018 is a few weeks away. And... Um, yeah, I need to be prepared for when it's go time.
until then, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.